Ladies and gentlemen, actually I'm so surprised that why they chose me because I'm not a doctor. It is a software company I can understand, if it's a social work. Then I realized medical is also social work, you know. There are two reasons. One is when you tell, I, when you tell them I give a prepared speech, you know the time is. I'm a teacher and I taught computer science in Christ University. So for a teacher, when there is a mic and then you have students, I think, until the next bell rings, you can speak. <laughs> so I said, no, let me not take this disadvantage of giving you prepared speech. But I will not do that today because I have time limitation. All of us, actually, when you walk on the street, you see a beggar, you see an old man, you see poverty around. And when it rains, it is worse because children, you know, will be suffering in the rain. But we think our sari should not be wet, it's a silk sari, so we should go fast. But sometime long back, two and a half thousand, two and a half thousand years back, a young prince saw these things and he became a monk. We called him as Prince Siddhartha in those days and later known as Gautama Buddha. Why? Why we don't become like him? Because it's as simple as that that he was extremely sensitive. People who are sensitive can only feel the difficulties of poverty. And I'm sure your founder, Ada, knew the helplessness of poor people. And that is when she went back to America and studied. Other people would have said, oh, India is a great country. If, you know, 100 years back, it would have been much more comfortable in terms of the nature. She would have enjoyed and gone back. But she did not do that. A very sensitive person can understand somebody else's difficulty. That's the first quality in a social group. I just want to tell you, my father was a medical practitioner. My sister is a professor of gynecology. And they influenced me a lot in my life, though I was a software engineer in golden, in old days. I want to tell, you know, to, my father was an atheist, never believed in God. And we used to have long discussions, and he influenced me a lot. Actually, he used to work for, you know, his part-time, he used to work with the missionary hospital after his retirement. So we used to have a long discussions with him about religion, belief, and many more things, which helped me in my life, particularly as a chairperson of Infosys Foundation. Once I was telling my father, tell me, medical is like any other profession, like, a, like there are many professions in the world, and what's great about medical, he told me, but I believe, this is my personal belief, God is not in the church, he is not in the temple, he is not in the mosque. For me, God is in, in the form of a patient. And I meet patients every day, that means I meet my God every day. Whereas you go to temple and you, I don't know what you will meet there and whom you will meet there. Narayan Murthy, I never met in a temple anyway. <laughs> so, he gave me the first injection that all of us are human. And we should find out our God in our work. That was the greatest inspiration to me. And because of my father, I'm standing here today. You know, we had three daughters to our parents and then one son. And the 50, you know, I'm 63 now. 50, 55 years back in North Karnataka. It was like, you know, you are a daughter, means you have to educate her up to BA, either in Canada or in English, or MA in sociology, or a medical up to MBBS, not even MD and get you married. That's the main thing for a father. But my father was so different. He said, no, I don't have difference between a boy and a girl. Let my daughter study whatever she wants. And I did ask him, you are so unusual for your age. Tell me what is that? He said, a lady changed my view. And that I want to tell you today. Around uh, 75 years back, my father was 22 or 23 years old, he was the LCPS. In those days, there was the LCPS, then MBBS, then the MD. He did his LCPS in 1942, a license to practice medicine. And he was posted Karnataka, Maharashtra, border, a, a small village known as Chandigarh. Chandigarh, not Chandigarh, Chandigarh. He did not know Marathi and it's to pour eight months in a year. And uh, he said there was, a, there was a nurse and uh, she had a quarters, the doctor had a quarters. 
most people will come for small things, you know, who had a fever or something, for whenever they have any major disease, they will come and they want always injection. So he said, I really got bored within two, three months coming there, particularly he studied in Pune. Pune to Chandigarh was a great contrast and he was in a government service. And he was wondering what I will do here. One night, you know, it was pouring in July in monsoon and somebody came and knocked the door of his house. And they said, they were all stout people, you know, all covered with a kamli or the rug in a village. He can't make out whose face was what. It's a true story. I'm not adding, I'm not telling you an imagination like my novel. It's a real life story. They came and they came with a danda, that is stick, and they said, doctor, he said, yes, get ready. He said, for what? There's a patient. He said, what patient? He said, delivery patient. He said, no, I'm a male doctor and I, I have seen how they conduct delivery and I'm not an expert. They said, don't talk much, you just get into the cart. He was scared, he was 22 years old, he was a thin man and there were eight people like this and there were two carts and he said, if I say no, they will beat me up. And whatever little instrument he had and he put it in the box, which I, I kept that box even today, just to remember how life was there 75 years back. He said, they took me and it was pouring, I didn't know to which direction they took me. At last, we, after an hour and a half, we reached a place. In dark, I did not know the name of the village, the road, anything, and I get down, there was one single house. The lamp, was, there was no electricity, but the lamp was burning. He got into the house, and there, they said, here is the patient, you should deliver her. And closed the door, went away. The girl was, the patient was a girl of 16 or 17 years old. Very tender age, having a baby. And uh, he did not know how to conduct, and he was worried in case she dies, they will beat him up. And, but he has to conduct, and then he, he casualed her, said, how many hours you are having pain. And he was telling me, it was my first patient, you know. I was more scared than her. And she was not scared, she said, doctor, don't worry. She was telling me, don't worry alone. And there was an old lady sitting there and, you know, uh, he started remembering his lessons in Pune Medical College, Sasur Medical College. He said, okay, you boil the water, he's the spirit, you know, he brought some spirit. I don't know how he, he could do. Then the labor stopped for some time and he talked to her. The old lady was also deaf. He said, it was such an area. The old lady is deaf. Eight people are standing outside. They have closed the door, I can't escape. It's pouring outside. There is no operation table, there is no clean environment. And there were the sacks of rice. So he put a rubber sheet on that and made it a table and to make her to sleep there. And he asked, you know, when did you have a last period? Because whatever little he knew, he has to find out. Then she told, you know, I was, uh, I'm a daughter of a Jamindar, a big man in the village. And I, they never sent me to school because, you know, I should not mix with boys in those days. I'm talking about 1942, you know, that time, story. So they got me a teacher who will come and stay in our house and teach me. And he taught me, but he, I fell in love with him and I became pregnant. I did not know how he became pregnant, but I became pregnant. And uh, by, you know, because my father was a very powerful man, uh, my lover just disappeared. And I, I, I did not know what to do. I didn't tell my mother, they will kill me, family honor, all those things. I just kept quiet and when I crossed six months, they came to know. Some women do not store their stomach, you know, some people do, some people not. And then they tried all deshi method of aborting her and she was not able to abort. They beat her up, the first thing is beat your daughter and then try all the abortion methodologies. But nothing happened, then they have to keep her somehow secret because of family pride. So they had a big field in that there was a house, farmhouse, they kept her with the old deaf lady who cannot understand. And uh, they thought, like any woman deliver in those days, she would also deliver. But she was not like any other woman, she was not able to deliver it. Probably it was a breach, my father said, it was a breach. He understood and all. And she told doctor, don't conduct any delivery for me. You go outside and tell, this, this requires an operation, this lady, and I will die in this. Nobody will come to know and they will not beat you. My father said, they will beat me if I go outside. They said, no, they will not beat you, tell you require lot of instrument, it's an operation, you have to take me to Belgium, nearest one place, and in the process I will die. And I want to die, I don't want to live. Because what future I have if I live? 
in this small village, what future I have? I don't have, because I don't know if the, the news is leaked that I'm unwed mother. If it is not leaked, my father will marry me off to any man whom he likes. And I don't want to live like this. So best is you allow me to die. My father was wondering, so she may be right, what she thought. But a duty of a doctor, up to the last minute, we have to hope the patient will survive. And you work for it. He said, no, that I cannot do. I may not know gynecology well, but I will not allow you to die. In my limited knowledge, I would like to conduct this delivery, whatever best I can do. In the, you know. And she delivered with a great difficulty. Details I do not know because I'm not a gynecologist, but my father would describe that to my sister, who, was a, who is a gynecologist. And always my sister would tell, Dad, you have a lot of courage. He said, situation brings courage better. Those dandies, you know, those, all the sticks were showing me, and I have to do. She delivered and she asked, you know, what, what is a baby? It was a female or a baby girl. Then she started crying. She said, why are you crying? She said, oh, why girl? Yeah, I wish it had been a boy. And the baby did not respond. Normally babies cry when they are born. And uh, he started the old method, you know, slap the baby, put them upside down, then artificial respiration, you know, all those things. Today nobody does that. He did all that. She said, doctor, I request you again, don't make the baby to survive. It's a girl. Her fate will be like mine. And if she survives, if people will tell, oh, she was unwed mother's child, please do not do this. My dad did not respond. He said, we will not listen to patient. As a doctor, I should do the best interest of this patient, so I will not listen. And the baby cried, and uh, the men outside came in. Okay, doctor's job is over, now we get up. He said, no, I require some more time to clean, pleasant time, all those things. Give me another half an hour. And meantime, she, well, the girl was continuously crying, and my father told her, I want to tell you whatever little I know, because he was only 22. There is a nursing college in Pune, and my friend, Mr. Bapat, is a clerk there. You go there and tell that my father's name was Dr. R.H. Kulkarni, and he was popularly called at R.H. He said, tell R.H. has sent me, tell R.H. has sent me, and Bapat should help you. Because my father himself was not a rich man, he was a poor man. It is not rich or poor. Compassion is independent of your stomach and brain. It is in the heart. It's in the heart. A man who's a young boy of 22 with no money, no experience, is giving away his way of helping to a 16 years old girl. If you go to Pune somehow. There is a clerk by the name Bapat. You meet him. Tell RH has sent you. And, and he will help you. You become a nurse. You become a nurse. Lead an independent life lead a courageous life. Pune is a big city. Nobody bothers about you. And uh, I don't know how much she understood. And you know, she, my father came out, they gave him 100 rupees as a gift, conducting the delivery. In 42, it was maybe 10,000 rupees probably. Then he said, okay, he was about to get into the uh, uh, cart. He said, wait for a minute, I forgot my one instrument. He went inside and gave 100 rupees to that girl. He said, this is the only way I can help you. Whatever he earned, 100 rupees. That was first earning, probably a private practice of 100 rupees. He gave it to her, and I wish you all the best. He came back, and they did not talk. He did not talk. When he got down, they said, Doctor, this is a dream. Please think it's a dream. You don't remember where you went. You don't remember what you did. You don't remember you know, who took you. Anyway, he did not know who was that. And forget, if you talk any time, please remember how, we'll count how many bones you have. He said, OK. And he didn't tell anybody. Then later, my father got married. Then he had a company in Chandigarh. And after some time, you know, they left. But it entered into my father's mind that he should become a gynecologist. He said, fortunately, I could save her with little knowledge. Suppose I would not have saved her. Then he, I would have felt guilty throughout my life. So this LCPS is of no use. Then he did not have money. And with the great hard work of my mother, who was a school teacher, he did his MBBS, and that time I was born. So, you know, after seven years of his marriage, he did his MBBS, because he has to save money to do his condensed course MBBS in Bombay. Then again, he started saving money, and at the age of 42, he could save more money than he did his 
MS gynecology in Egmore Medical College at the age of 42. And everyone is to tell me, you are a fool. Why you have a good practice? Why your daughters have grown up? You should worry about their marriage than your studies. He said, no, I should become a gynecologist. And he became a very well-known gynecologist with a lot of compassion. He would bring his students home and always he would tell. There's a difference between other profession and medical. We may not make as much money as other people make, particularly in business. There are no software in those games. <laughs> but the greatest boon a, medical, a doctor has, he, is, he can help people in difficulty, which money cannot do. And there's a famous shloka in Sanskrit that says, if you have faith in doctor, even the doctor gives you water, water becomes like Ganga. And doctor becomes Narayana, not Narayana Murti, Narayana means Lord Vishnu. Aushadam Janavi Itoyam Vaidyo Narayana Harihi. The ordinary water with faith given by a doctor, if you have faith, and psychologically you will improve. And always think, doctor comes in the form of a god, because God cannot be present everywhere. When you are in difficulty, you think of a doctor, you don't think of your money. You think of a doc medicine, you don't think of your shares. When your body is paining, you think of pain relief. You don't think of your 60, 40, 80, 120 side. Pain is inseparable in life. Medical knowledge, medical scheme, medical science is inseparable from living human being. It is, without software you can live. Without doctors, you cannot live. Without compassion, you cannot live. Without ambition, you can live. Without compassion, you cannot live. Compassion is an integral part of a doctor. And the day doctor loses that, he becomes like any other businessman. The story, you must be ending, I'm ending the story. No, it's only up to the interval. <laughs> Many years passed, and being a doctor and a professor, he would always attend medical conferences. He would always go. And I used to tell my father, now you are you know, retired. Still, why do you go? He said, no, beta. Medical science, we should always change this every year. And we must learn what is the update ourselves because there are so many changes happen. And he, you know, until he died, at the age of 78, he died. He would always attend medical conferences and make notes. Once he went to a medical college, I don't know where he went, maybe Aurangabad or somewhere, somewhere that one. And uh, there's a lady who came on the dais and she gave, gave a beautiful oration. And maybe a paper she presented, I suppose. And uh, my father was very impressed. When she got down, he asked her, Beta, what's your name? And she said, Chandra. I'm a Dr. Chandra. And uh, he said, how did you get all this data in a village? She said, so what if you're in a village? And, I very, and she said, so what, I'm in a village. I, I, you know, I go to different villages. I, make, I, I work for the paper, though I'm not a teacher. And uh, I keep all the data. And he was quite impressed. And one of my father's old friends must have come. They said, oh, RH, come here. When did you come? Or, you know, all your daughters are married. Ubaya Kushlopar, he said. General thing, you know, was going on. And she came back and said, uh, uh, doctor, I forgot. I said, I'm sorry. What's your name? He said, my name is the Dr. RH Kulkarni. Uh, then she said, uh, where did you any time uh, stay in a village known as Chandragarh? He said, yeah. Long back in my childhood, you know, in my apprenticeship, in, at the age of 22, I stay. Then she said, you must come to our house. He said, no, no, I don't have time. And he, did, he felt he doesn't know her at all. How can you go to someone's house you do not know? He said, no, you must come. And it makes a lot of difference to my mother. He said, is your mother related to me? Because my father had nine siblings, you know, it's a huge family. And first cousin, 75. And my mother helped my father to conduct at least 70 deliveries, you know, in the hospital. Because, you know, one of the cousins is always pregnant. <laughs> and, you know, there are always, in our house, there are five bedrooms. One of them is always an ICU. One is always an OPD. So I grew up like that at home. There's always a bandage. There's always something, you know, first year going on. It was a factory at home because we are 75 first cousins. So he thought he must have forgotten one of his nephews or maybe nieces who are married or something. She said, there's nothing much, doctor, but you must come. And he said, okay, anyway, he went with her. And he's a very social person. And when he went there, um, you know, 
uh, there was a lady standing there in a grey hair and all. When she, you know, he was not able to recognize and when she went, he went inside. He said, Doctor, I was waiting for you all these years and touched his feet and started crying. He thought, oh, she must be one of his patients, you know, particularly he said infertility patients because infertility patients, when they get children, they always tell my father, with your help, we got babies. He said, don't tell that way. Please don't tell that way, my wife is here. <laughs> She'll be mad at me. <laughs> so this is my father's standard joke that infertility patients will use wrong words and also cry a lot and name the children after my father. It was always there. <laughs> Is that because of the, a sense of gratitude, a sense of gratitude. Words may be wrong, but heart is never a wrong thing, you know. Heart will be in the right place all the time. Your words may be wrong, your brain may work wrong. You always cheat someone, how will I cheat that person? How will I take advantage? How will I get money from her? And all those things. But heart says, don't do that. It is not correct. So you would understand infertility patients are ever grateful. So he thought, oh, one of those infertility patients. He said, oh, which year did you deliver? And you know, that time was not even MS and all. He said, doctor, can you, you, I'm sure you have not recognized me. He said, no, I have not recognized you. He said, do you remember your first patient? He said, huh, I remember. But he never connected that first patient, you know. I'm your first patient. He said, still I can't get you. He said, do you remember the lattice you conducted the delivery with the help of a lattice? He said, with oh, the scare of a lattice I conducted. And the same girl. Now she's old. He said, oh, Chandgarh, uh, 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 a rice sack became a table, 100 rupees, she said, 100 rupees gift. Go and meet Aapte and ask, tell him, RHS sent me. Then he started remembering, it was so many years back, you know, and he has forgotten. He said, yeah, yeah, one lady I conducted, a young girl, not even a lady, a young adult, you know, of 16 years. She said, I'm the same patient. He was very happy. He said, oh, it's a great thing. Tell me, what's your daughter doing? He said, she is Chandra. I said, Oh, he is Chandra, I'm very happy she had done well. And she said, she is a doctor and she is a gynecologist. My father was still very happy. He said, what did you do? She said, with your hundred rupees, I ran away from home with my baby. I went to Pune and contacted Apte, the clerk in, in the nursing college. I was SSLC failed, but they could take in 1942. I did my nursing, keeping the baby. And I became a staff nurse. Later I felt I should have done medical, but I did not have money and courage and support. And with, but still, I did not go back to my village and I started working in government hospital. My parents traced me but came to Pune, but I took a transfer to Bombay. They came to Bombay, but Bombay is a big city and by that time I became bold and I said, I'm not coming back, you do whatever you want. I have many people in my work and I knew many police people. So I said, in case you do anything, I can tell the police station and village people get normally scared, a place like Bombay, to Chandigarh is a big distance. They went back. But I made my point. My daughter, who was not crying when she was born, whom I wish she could have been dead, you made her to survive, should become a doctor, and particularly a gynecologist, because she could save many women like me. But I told my daughter, you can build a nursing home, make a lot of money, Doctor, I'm sorry, I'm crossing your 30 minutes limit and the 7 minutes. I'll finish. <laughs> Ladies are talking to you, mothers are talking to you, system analysts are talking to you, teachers are talking to you. I'm all four in one. <laughs> yeah. She told her daughter, money is not an important thing. It never helped me. I was the daughter of a big zamindar, only daughter of a big zamindar. We had 500 acre flat, probably 10 kgs of gold. Nothing helped me. Education helped something, but most important is compassion. Compassion of that 22 years doctor who had his first earning of 100 rupees giving me and going to Apte. Changed my life. Better in life, if you want to live like a real human being. A real human being means a compassionate human being doing your duty to the society and also looking after your family. And if you want to do that, you have to do along with your work, social work. She became a gynecologist, married a gynecologist, started a hospital, and then three days in a week, she will do free consulting, morning and evening. And 70% paid, 30% unpaid. That model she introduced long back in a village. She became extremely popular. 
Then she told, you know, mother told her story. She said, I want to meet that doctor. By the time Apte was dead. There is no way they could trace my father. Because in 1956, there was a state reorganization. And that's the re reason that I'm bilingual with Marathi. You know, I can speak both Kannada and Marathi with equal ease. So we had an option to stay in Maharashtra or in Karnataka. And we being Kannada people, very proud about our heritage, we opted Karnataka. Chandra's mother did not know which, state, which part of government we chose, whether my father remained in government service, where he went, there was no trace. But she always felt, I should meet him before I die. I want to thank him and tell my daughter does the same work. And she told her daughter, his name was R.H. and his name was Ramachandra. So she named her daughter the Chandra and my father lifted his head and saw it was the R.H. hospital. This is a great tribute to the medical fraternity here. A doctor can change entire scenario. It is not my father in particular I'm talking. Every doctor sitting here, you are capable and you have done this job, you are going to do that and you will do it. You are touching the human life. It is not with money, it is not with share, it is not with jewelry, it is not with diamond, it is with your compassion. And your founder has done that. She has showed it to you in life, apart from your 8120 side, going to America, holiday in Bangkok, okay, having a Mercedes Benz car, there exists another life, a life of compassion. Helping others. My dad used to tell me, when I die, I don't have any fear. I'll go to hell or heaven, I do not know. But I have a courage to meet God's face, if he exists, because he was an atheist. I tell him, look, I served your children the best way I can do. And that, is, that power you have, none of us have. I have only money, I can help patient, but you can remove the pain. I can't remove the pain. And this is not just a college, this is a temple. A temple which makes you the most compassionate person and send you, sends outside to the world as a missionary to help people. Missionary to help reduce someone's pain. Missionary to inject compassion with others. A profession which is so, which is so noble, like teaching profession, which produces, so, which touches so many, so many heart, wipes so many tears. When a doctor makes a mistake, the patient will be six feet below the ground. If a judge makes a mistake, a patient will be hanging six feet above the ground. If a teacher makes a mistake, the entire batch will be spoiled. Here are doctor teachers. You have the, you have the responsibility of a teacher, a doctor, and a great responsibility of a judgment of a patient's situation. I always felt there should not be, this is my personal opinion, there should not be these new laws of, uh, you know, suing the doctor because that is something you are taking a doctor as a commercial con person because no doctor will do something wrong to the patient, however good or bad he is. When a patient stands, doctor always takes the correct decision, you know, in the, in the interest of the patient. When I was in the U.S., when I go to the doctor, they will give 100 possible things. And I used to get scared. I told them, don't give me all internet things which even I can read. You tell me by your experience in medical college. I have seen 100 patients. Out of that, people like you were 90. I may fall in 10, that's a different. But your word gives me enormous courage to face it. If you give me a statistics with your experience, which an internet cannot give you, I tell all my colleagues, don't read internet and go to a doctor. Have faith in doctor and go to him and tell doctor, these are my symptoms, these are my symptoms. And tell me, and you, I'm in your hand, do me the best for me. Have faith in doctor. Don't, uh, no, you have to ask some questions, whatever you require. Don't examine a doctor. Today patients are examining the doctor. Okay, I saw on the internet like this. So, you can see many things in internet. It doesn't give you, it's only a 2D. A doctor is a 3D person. He has seen in life because every flower is beautiful. Every flower is different. Every human being is different. The same sulfur drug may, I'm sensitive, but may not, my sister may not be sensitive. My child may be sensitive. My husband may not be sensitive. It's not a science, it is not an art. Medical science is a science of art. It has a definite science, there's also a definite art. 
and the bedside manners make a patient 80% of the time sure and confident. That is never taught in internet. It is taught in the college. You are in a great college. You are, it is started by a most noble lady. There is a lady by the name Ada in olden days, you know, about 150 years back, I suppose. She was the first programmer in the world. Lady Ada, we call Lady Ada, daughter of her Lord Byron, was the first programmer in the world. She wrote the sequence of operations in mathematics, and that became the basis of programming and the basis of software. Every software person should be ever grateful to Lady Ada, otherwise who would not have done software. Similarly, your Lady is Ada is the basis of your life, the way you live, the way she lived, the way she thought, the way she taught, the way she conducted her life should be the most important thing in your life than, you know, taking someone, someone told me, who is your role model? I said, no, I'm a role model, I know. I'm on the fatter side, I'm, so that I agree. I don't have any role model. My role model is my own conscience. Do I do right? The God within me will say, no, do I write wrong? As a human being, am I doing right thing or wrong thing? I'm, for any doctor, this conscience is the role model. You have called me to deliver a lecture. I really touch me. You know, where is Lady Ada, Ida and where am I? She's like a Himalaya. I am a small mountain in front of your college. That's the reason I did not take up that seat. It is meant for the people with higher consciousness. I'm a very ordinary person. There's a very important and a very beautiful shloka in Sanskrit which our ancestors have taught. What makes a person beautiful? Keyu rana vibhushayanti purusham harana chandra ujjwala nasna panam na kusumam salankrita amurdvaja. It says, it is not your makeup, it is not your flowers, it is not your jewelry, it is not your kirita or the, your, your throne or your bangles or the sari you wear, nothing makes you beautiful. The beauty of a person is the kindness in the heart, confidence on the face, a good tongue. I mean, their good tongue doesn't mean only a tongue should be good. A connection between a heart and a tongue and the mind is the most beautiful person in life. Thank you very much for your patience.